Hello, I am Kyle, Good Paws Hobby. Uh, welcome back to The Element and welcome back to Tea and Pancakes episode two. This one's been a long time coming. Um, I broke through the threshold of 35 games uh, a little while back, but just didn't have time in the schedule to actually record this. So luckily I have all the information on a spreadsheet that I, um, you know, adjust as I get games in and then stamp, like finalize once I hit that five number uh, threshold. So um, let's break into some of the stats first. Uh, so 35 games um, as of the 25th of April. Uh, so just about a month ago. And um, unfortunately that was actually the last game of, I, I am at 30, five uh, again like board like in hand uh physical version root and um that was at 43 hours and 19 minutes um that did include the one six player uh robo run bull the crazy one that i kind of did last time on episode 1.5 um so that definitely helped my time uh, like boost my time so i since last time had two two player games um once against the bot once against kate um two three player games and then one six player game so that kind of bonkers one so maps first off i have finally uh broken the seal on the winter map so i play i played the winter map three times actually um and the forest map twice uh, or autumn map and uh so i've played the winter map three times um i was gonna bring up the tail end of my maps sorry winter fans um and the rest is gonna be what was last time mountain in third lake in second autumn in first lake is a really close second i do really love it i think it's beautiful i think it's a lot of fun uh really cool gameplay uh you know effects but the autumn one man it's just so so root um and i know that eventually i'm gonna have to like level with myself and say like i can't just keep saying that's my favorite just because like nostalgia but like but the winter map um is in fourth for, so I've played it, you know, three times as much as I've played the mountain map. Because uh, up until recently, you really couldn't play the mountain map against bots. There are some workarounds for that, and uh, I hope to, you know, check those out. But um, I just don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't really care for it. Um, I, it, I suppose, could make for some interesting gameplay, but, like, that top, the northernmost, like, avenue... Um, I don't know. It's just really a little bit awkward and can make for some like supremely like borked, you know, AI interactions when movement is going on up there because they don't have as many options to choose between. Um, so yeah, I, you know, the fact that it's random layout for the clearings, it totally could present like cool, uh, settings, but yeah, played three games in it so far um and did not really enjoy any of them um i mean i enjoyed the games overall but i feel like it was in spite of the map um there was nothing that that map was like adding to it which was kind of a bummer um who knows maybe it'll grow on me um landmarks haven't played with the landmarks yet of the you know upcoming expansion and actually haven't played with the mountain or the lake map since then so so i'm just going to say they're staying the same from last time tower second place fairy first place i just i really like the fairy move around um and uh i mean the tower, those are really close first and second but that's my ordering um hirelings this is a new one I kind of referenced it before, but we didn't have the ability to have that. Um, well, I've only played one game so far. I played one game with hirelings, um, and uh, and then printed off the new the new PMP kit. So hoping to get some more games in soon um, and hit the the new hirelings the table and the new hirelings system. So I feel like that definitely influenced 
this ordering. Um, in fourth place, runner up, uh, Diplomats. We really didn't actually ever use that one, which I feel like could have been to our detriment. Probably definitely was um, in terms of strategic, you know, benefit, but uh, we just it never got used at our table. Um, feline Physicians is in third. It was, it got used a little bit, uh, but not nearly as much. And again, these are really kind of almost like shouldn't even count because the old system, there was just so much turnover um, that, and if you didn't start your turn with some of these things, you didn't get to actually use them. So Furious Protector was in second. Uh, that did actually have a couple of times when it, it you know, influenced the game. Um, and the last dynasty, I think, even though it almost never got used as like an attacking force, it as a threat was a palpable influence on the game. And that got passed around a lot. Um, and so I'm looking forward to the new system, looking forward to the new, uh, you know, tweaks to the, to the, the hirelings, um, but also the hireling system itself. Um, okay, last two categories, the big ones. Uh, favorite to pilot. This had uh, this had some some changes. So in eighth place, uh, we're going to say the Clockwork Cult. That dropped down from fourth before. Um, in seventh place, Rivet Folk moved up a spot. Sixth place, Electric Eerie moved up a spot. Uh, Clockwork Conspiracy was in fifth place. Uh, that stayed the same, even though things changed around it. The uh, Mechanical Marquee 2.0 uh, was in fourth place. That dropped by two. The Vagabot stayed at third. Again, like the Corvids, they stayed while everything else shifted. Um, the Automated Alliance went from sixth up to second. Um, so they're in second place, and the dummy duchy is still in first. Um, I just will take it from top to bottom. Dummy duchy just I think is a really cool design. There were some really, uh, really great changes um, in terms of movement of warriors on the board and sending them back to the burrow to then be ready to dig again later. Um, there's some really smart with the rally action and a couple of tweaks of the ministers. It just is a really cool design and I like it a lot. Very streamlined, very can be very impactful, um, especially if you have multiples of the same suit in a row and then they get down to those later, like the high victory point scoring ministers. Automate Alliance was a ton of fun. I only played with them one time um, in this past month. Uh, and it, it was just a blast watching them do their thing. Uh, and it was just more so than the other factions, really easy to just see and imagine like a narrative going on um, of them building building support and then blowing up a spot. Uh, Vagabot, I think is always fun uh, to just, you know, be this little other thing going on on the board. It almost like really, it, it in, in some ways, like the frustrations of the Vagabond as a character is almost alleviated with the Vagabot because it's just sort of this other, it, 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 the character feels like this other thing, no matter who's controlling it, human or AI. But the fact that it's AI, it's almost like you're playing Root with a mod. <laughs> like, oh, you're playing with that like robot Link <laughs> running around doing stuff. Um, I really like watching it. Mechanical Marquee 2.0 just had some, it was a, not a great game um, that I had, the big like six player game. And just like, I don't know, there are some, even though that one is the most nostalgic, like the autumn map, um, and also the one I've done by far the most, um, I've done them 20 times, uh, they've been 20 games. There were just some times when the, the lever or the button that they keep just like hammering is just like flooding certain areas with troops and sort of just not being efficient with them. Um, so yeah, so I, I still, they're in the top half. Um, Corvid Conspiracy, fifth place. Uh, they were pretty fun to watch too. Didn't, the narrative wasn't quite as like 
clear as the automated alliance, which makes sense because that one you can track like the sympathy to the blowing up of spots as opposed to the Corvids, which you flip it over and you're like, oh, it was a snare, it was a bomb. And then you have to kind of come up with the head cannon um, if you're interested in that, or you just keep playing the game. Electric Eerie um, moved up a spot. Actually, both Electric Eerie and Rivet Folk moved up a spot really because the Clockwork Cult went down a spot. Um, Rivet Folk, I met, they're like seventh and a half, no, they're like sixth and a half place. They're like inching their way up to climb. I like the new build of uh, kind of emulating the big like otter ball of death. Um, Electric Eerie is the Electric Eerie. Had some weak games, uh, but in this, this last uh, five games, but it's still, I don't know, it just like feels like a totally different power level sometimes from the other factions. But the Clockwork Cult, I mean, they all operate on randomness. You draw a card, the suit dictates a lot. And, um, but even still, the Clockwork Cult, there is just a lot of random that it that's going on, especially at the beginning of the turn. Um, like when you're flipping all those cards and those are where you're targeting for rituals and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, the, those two got a bump mainly because that one took a dive. Uh, okay, so last category, the big, the big one. Uh, favorite factions to play. And I gotta tell you, well, we'll start from the bottom. Um, I have now played both of the factions of the Marauders expansion. So this will be out of 10. In 10th place, the Otters. Uh, ninth place, Birds. Eighth place, Vagabond. Seventh place, Cats. Took a, uh, so yeah, that so far those three were the same bottom ones as they were before. Cats took a dive. They used to be third and now they are down in seventh. Um, Alliance and Crows stayed. Alliance at sixth, Crows at five. Um, then Lizards took a little bit of a dip from second to fourth. Moles went from first to third. And yes, if you're following along at home, that means my top two are the new factions. And yes, I do feel like a total sellout just saying my favorite factions are the brand new ones, um, the, the hotness. Badgers and then Rats. Um, the funny thing is I didn't even, pl I played four games as the Badgers this month or I keep saying this month, in these five games. Four of my five games, I was playing as the Badgers. Um, and the fifth game, I wasn't playing anything because I was piloting all six of the factions. So the the only faction I've been playing in these last five games have been the Badgers. Um, and on both builds, both PNP kits, I like this new one a lot better than the first one, which was dice-based. Um, so that was a big improvement, but just the way they operate, kind of moving around. I like the pickup, you know, in camp and decamp function of this new build. Um, they feel very mobile in their own weird way. And just what they're doing, it it feels so different from any other faction. It's, it's really neat. Um, but the rats, man. Uh, so I didn't even play them these five games, but my wife did when we were playing. And just being able to experience that faction from the other side of the table was almost just as fun as being able to be that faction. They're just this like vibrating force of excitement and violence and yeah, they're just, it's just a such a fun faction. Um, obviously you need to be comfortable being the needler, the, the um, of the table if you're going to be the rats otherwise you're not going to do well because you need you just need to take like lean into every possible oh they left a weak position here well better advance right into their back like unprotected area you need to be that jerk uh i feel to to play this faction well i could be totally wrong this is still very early days of the pnp but to my tastes or to you know my understanding if you are not hyper aggressive with them they are not going to work not going to do what you want them to do um okay moles i still love the moles moles lizards in a row um 
I mean, they're, they're still the same ordering. They're still first and second after those two new ones. And yes, I know those two are, there's a little bit of buoyancy based on the fact that they are the new thing, but I genuinely just love playing those factions. After the lizards, uh, crows. Uh, crows and Alliance. It's funny because the Alliance, I have more fun piloting than the Crows, but I have more fun playing as the Crows than the Alliance. But I haven't played Alliance in a long time, so I really need to... Uh, I've, I've watched others play Alliance more, but I have not played um, them in a long time, and I have only played once. Um, so that's like the pretty big caveat to all these numbers that some of these I'm basing on very small data sets. Um, the cats did take a pretty big drop. Um, and I'm going to say the, the Alliance and crows, I didn't really play them this why did the, just like thinking about them and watching them be played and watch them on the table. I'm more excited to get to those factions than I am to play cats again. So, uh, wasn't really anything they did. It just was that other factions did things better. Um, Vagabond, birds, otters. So Vagabond, I've got nothing against Vagabond. Um, I, uh, I'm i excited to, to play Vagabond again sometime. I really do want to do a, a video where I'm going against the second Vagabond. So there's that tension between us. Um, birds do have I like a spot in my heart a little bit but I have to be in a really specific mood um and otters I am genuinely excited to at some point try to implement some strategy like I don't have any strategy I've only tried them once and it was a humongous crippling failure um I've only seen them do poorly in games that I've been a part of whether playing them or playing against them so I would like to I, I like the concept of the faction quite a bit have not been able to make anything more than just like a hobby about talking about how cool I think the theme is um so that's it that's uh that's the whole rundown of where I'm at with Root at this point 42 hours in 35 games in um I have my two-week tour coming up with the the guard band um so and I am definitely bringing Root to that and hoping to play some with the people that I know who already know how to play, but also introduce it to some people as, hey, this is my favorite game of all time, and it's kind of a little bit of a learn, but I'm here to help, and I would be more than happy to, to you know, bring some other people into the game and, um, you know, help out any way I can. But, um, yeah, I will let you know when I have... Uh, either five more games to talk about or something big and exciting that happens between now and then for a part partial episode. Um, but until that point, uh, I'm going to get back to driving. I don't know if you can tell. I'm, I'm pretty tired. This was helpful. This got me awake again. Um, but uh, I will see you next time when I have more route to talk about. Have a great day, everybody.